Hallelujah. Anybody have ever been in my meetings, Pastor Lonnie, I tell you, I know I'm the overseeing founder, but I submit every decision to my leadership. Am I telling the truth? When we bought this building, I said, Pastor Lonnie, uh, Cassandra has a lot of the operations behind her. I don't make any major decisions. Even if the Lord, even my dreams, I'll tell them about it. This is Even this building itself, I submitted to them, and then I submitted it to the elders. I, I told them the dream I had. I told them what God said. But I, at the same time, I still had enough humility to get their consent. Amen. What do you all think? What are you praying about? Oh, Apostle, we know the Lord spoke. Matter of fact, thank God for them this time because when we first started negotiating this building, and can I be honest with you? The negotiation was starting to get on my nerves. And the negotiation, things weren't going the way I thought it should go. And I was thinking about, you know what? That's another building we look at. I've had enough of this. Why about, how about go to the next building? I never forget an elder Ray spoke up. And Elder Ray, I remember we were standing over at the other building trying to make that decision. And Elder Ray said, but Apostle, the Lord gave you the vision for the other building. We're going to stand. We're going to believe. I thought to myself, Elder Ray, what you doing, man? What you doing? What you doing? Don't you? But at the same time, I had enough sense to submit what the Lord wanted. He get offended over that. He was right. Then we, we had sold a seed collectively. The elders came. We didn't tell it. They, they sold a seed right here. The, the building was empty. It wasn't even finished yet. And we sold a seed. We believed God. Amen. And until God released us, we had to stay the course. Amen. Hallelujah. When you flow under the authority of the Lord, that's no bickering and complaining when you mature. You take it. You say, okay, let, let's, let's talk this through. Let's resolve this. Let's work through this as unto the Lord. Amen. See, a lot of times we have to be careful. The reason why God have us submit to the things of God, many times it's the spirit of rebellion sometimes that can get in us. And rebellion is very difficult to discern and to break. What is the spirit of a rebellion? The spirit of rebellion cannot stand. It, it revolts against authority. It doesn't like to be told what to do. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Oh, no shame. I graduated from that class with honors. I think I was born with that trait when I was a kid. I did not like anyone. To t my, the biggest problem was with authority. I believe that's why God, the first thing he did when I got saved was taught me that. He taught me how to submit. He taught me, even though I was probably, i am be honest with you, the most gifted person spiritually, dreams, visions, and all this, but I had to submit. I, I, amen. I had to focus uh, on my character. I had to focus on the love of God and, being, and walking these things out by faith. And God calls us from glory to glory. In every new season, there's a new, there's a new training. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 12, 12, as we deal with the coordination of God's work, coordinated work, 1 Corinthians 12, 12 says this, For as the body is one and many members, but all members of that one body being many are one body also in Christ. For one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether they're slaves or free, and have all been drink, made to drink into one spirit. For in the fact, the body is not one member, but many. Then it says in verse 15, If the foot should say, Because I am not a hand, I am not of the body. Now notice the direction of operation. The individual says, Because I'm not this, I'm no longer a part of the body. I've had people do this before, and the Lord, God has them in this season. And, and, and Apostle, if, if I can't do this, then I'm going to have to leave. Well, after we pray, you have to figure out what you're going to do. Because you, you, God works in us in different ways. God deals with us with things in us. We, the, the house of God is not entertainment. The house of God is not a place of showcase. The house of God is also the family of God, where we're submitting to the authority of the Holy Spirit as a collective and as one. Hallelujah. Praise God. At the end of the day, it's about glorifying Jesus at any way, by any means possible, as the Lord leads us. See, the problem with Abihu and Nadab is that they tried to do something God did not tell them to do. 
They saw Aaron doing it and thought they can do it themselves. I see this a lot in the prophetic ministry. I see a lot of people, they see the prophetic and they see the anointing in that area. And because God deals with them in an individual basis, they really feel like that they have a prophetic ministry. Well, I encourage that if you have one, but you'd be surprised that God speaks to all of us if we're open to the Holy Ghost. He speaks to all of us prophetically. That doesn't mean you have a prophetic ministry. Hallelujah. Maybe you are a prophetic usher. Maybe you are a prophetic camera person. Uh -huh, Y'all ain't no smiling on that one, is it? Maybe you are the prophetic cleanup person this, this season. Maybe you're the prophetic sound person. <laughs> Why is that? Because God is more concerned about the big, the whole, the body versus just the individual member. Even though God cares about us, he's very personal to us. He loves us so much. How I many know he loves us so much? But we cannot say, I have no need of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? Ephesians 4, verses 1. Therefore, the prison of the Lord beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long-suffering. Long-suffering means how you deal with people. I've talked this before. Patience is how you deal with situations. Long-suffering is how you deal with people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bearing or forbearing, let me put it in modern terms, putting up with one another in love. <laughs> let me read it again for those in the back. Hallelujah. Therefore, the prison of the Lord beseech you to walk worthy of the calling. So you got to work worthy. And then he tells you what qualifies you to be worthy. He didn't say walk worthy because you gifted. You're worthy because you can sing or because you can preach. No, he said this is what it is to walk worthy with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, forbearing, and putting up with one another in love. That is the worthiness that he's talking about. Endeavoring, purposing, to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Any good pastor that's worth his, his, his calling will also understand this. That he understands that what, what God is looking for is those characteristics. Because though a person can be gifted, talented, and anointed, if they don't have these characteristics, amen, regardless, they can cause schisms and divisions. Not understanding that because of who they are or gifted, that they still can have pride in them. Praise the Lord. The Holy Spirit sets the order. That's the next point. The, 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 the work of God. Somebody say the work of God. The work of God is sacred. And because it's sacred, you take a different approach. You understanding that the Holy Spirit is, is the one who sets the order. Hallelujah. I've seen people that just... They're so against authority that they uh, don't even understand the, the leading of the Holy Spirit. I've had people, I, I remember there was a young man, he doesn't go here now, and I was doing um, school of the prophetic training over in our Louisville um, uh, church. And he, he had come to several of the trainings that I had done, the school of the Holy Spirit, the school of the prophetic dreams and those kind of webinars and different things that I used to do more so in person uh, before the pandemic, praise the Lord. And I never forget it randomly. He reached out to me. I, hadn't, I had a couple conversations. He wasn't a part of our church. And he reached out to me and he said, Apostle, can I, I, I know you interpret dreams. Um, can you uh, help me with this particular dream? I said, sure, my friend. Share your dream. Now, the dream didn't even really take uh, much of a gift to interpret. But in the dream, he says, he says, I was, he said that he was in a certain classroom and someone was teaching in the classroom. And he says, in the dream, I stuck my head in the classroom, and I looked at him. And then I left and went to another classroom, and I was teaching a class. 
almost every time someone has a dream about me, I'm always the teacher. I've never had anyone have a dream where I'm the student. God sets the order, not you. See, we don't like that. God sets the order. Don't care what you think. So I, I went in my classroom, and he said I had a class in that. He says while he was sitting in his class, someone said to him, said to him, you're in the wrong class. You need to be in his. So he got up and went in the hallway and, 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 and began to wonder where to go, and that was the end of the dream. I think all of y'all know what that dream means. The dream, re, dream represented, I, say, I know how people are sensitive. The Lord says you someplace else being taught, but the Holy Spirit is telling you that the things that you need in this season will come under the ministry that the Lord has given me. Bless his heart. You know what he said? Well, a pastor, you know, I appreciate that, but, you know, I really believe where I'm at, this is where the Lord wants me to be. Fine, stay there. But the Lord spoke to you. Amen. The Lord spoke to you. See, so what happens is a lot of times a person like myself that's a prophet, prophetic, I remember, I know that. I'm, I, I, see, I believe truth is like a wall. It doesn't bend. Amen. Truth is the truth regardless. So you can't ignore the voice of the Lord. Still love him if he ever reached out. Still would do anything for him that I could. But he needs to understand that he missed that season. He missed that time. Not understanding how to submit to the sacred voice of the Lord. Hallelujah. 